all of the major guitarists in the 80s actually i, I think a lot of guitar a lot of guy, a lot guitar of guitarists players. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know you know how, how did you join john mclaughlin first of all and uh hey it's another bill, it's another friend i mean it's great bill evans called me the saxophone okay, player the saxophone player and said can you come to paris like tomorrow to play mm. on a record with mclaughlin and i said well maybe not tomorrow but the next day yeah so i just i just went and wound up playing recording a record it was played in the band for a couple of years and uh how, how did the scheduling work for you because you, you know at the same time you're like doing tons of records and yeah, tour, I mean, touring with everyone and yeah I, somehow it all worked out you know i mean I, you know you make some choices and you so there's some rough decisions too to make. I'm, I think I I had to choose between McLaughlin and Wayne Shorter at one point. Oh that shit, was, that was a tough one. Wow, yeah, there's like some incredible footage of you with Wayne actually with Gary Willis and. Oh yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I love that stuff. Yeah, how, yeah, how was it like working with Wayne? That was oh. um, unbelievable, unbelievable. Yeah. He was just. You know, I, I always think that he he just brought such an energy to every. You'd traveled for hours and hours, and sometimes you know wind up really tired at a gig. And he was just like, as soon as the the curtain goes up, boom! He was just so fully present and connected to music and to whatever some deep spiritual thing that he had from yeah. just the sound of him with one note could transform the room and the and the stay and the band too. It was just like you just felt uplifted by the energy of his just that vibe that he had you know yeah how, how was he as a band leader to you guys Let, let's say compared to mclaughlin i think their personality he never said a word wayne never said a word about the music one, really one comment only never like well i remember a couple of things one his one comment about the music was make it more cinematic okay that was really the only direction i ever got and then i remember at a rehearsal his his he had a beautiful he probably still does a beautiful uh handwriting mm. he you know i don't know if you know familiar with him but he went to like art school yeah, and yeah, yeah. Such, but his his charts were really beautifully written and, okay. and he he would write out the he wouldn't just write like a a7 13 chord he would write out every note and i remember playing oh. one of his charts and he and I, he was like you know out of the 10 notes i missed one and he was like uh, oh, oh shit! I think I just got like a look, like where's that note? But, <laughs> no, he, oh, but yeah, he didn't say much. Didn't say much. What about McLaughlin? On about the other the hand, music. McLaughlin was a little more hands-on, but again, not you know, it kind of evolved naturally. I don't think yeah. there was much direction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was he was hardest on. He, he was more into the drumming aspect of it. McLaughlin. Yeah. I mean, the, the, Billy Cobham was in that band, right? Billy Cobham was in the, yeah. at the recording, but never did oh, yeah. any gigs. Really? And, then, and I think Gottlieb, Danny Gottlieb. Ah, Danny. Him. Well, okay. But he was oh. really into like teaching the whole Indian Takadimi system. <laughs> you would hear on bus rides in the back of the bus, you hear Dimi Takadimi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was really into that. I love that. Uh, 